A lot of us were caught really unprepared with the recent global situation that we're all facing. So I've decided to start a budget emergency preparedness series that's going to teach you how to feel more in control and be prepared for whatever the world throws at you on a dime. Today, we're going to start with how to make a shelf-stable 72-hour emergency food supply for two to four people with a cheap five-gallon bucket. The whole thing can be done for $30 or less. Let's get into it. A little backstory about me, I am Sarah Wilson, also known as Budget Girl here on the internet, and I used to be a prepper, and I've gotten lazy <laughs> at the wrong time. I was in high school when Hurricane Katrina hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast where I lived, and I had to evacuate for several months with nothing but a backpack full of clothes, pretty much. I've lived in places where tornadoes were a common occurrence, hurricanes, and now I live somewhere where natural disasters don't happen that often. So I've gotten lazy. And I used to have bug out bags and a ton of food storage and a bunch of like emergency supplies. And just over the years, I've kind of gotten less serious about it. But I think if anything has been learned from the current global situation, it's that we can't necessarily afford to get lazy on this kind of stuff. I, like many other people, once we started hearing news of what's happening, and I'm sorry I can't say it, it's for monetization purposes, found myself needing to go to the grocery store because my pantry was low, I hadn't shopped in a while, and not necessarily feeling super safe to do so. So I decided that one of the first things that I wanted to do to get more prepared going forward was to make myself a 72 hour emergency food kit. Now this is one of the several things that FEMA and ready.gov recommends that every single citizen have in their home a shelf stable 72 hour food supply. Now there are a few ways you can go about this. Now right now you can't really purchase an emergency kit online. If you do it's not going to come for several months but I think that could be a good thing if you're watching this because the food that comes in those emergency food kits is usually ration bars which quite frankly nobody wants to eat. If you do have to shelter in place, if there's an emergency where you lose power, water, you can't leave your house because something's happening in the world, any of those emergencies, and the only food you have on hand is ration bars, that's gonna make the whole situation, I don't wanna say worse, but it's not gonna make it any better. <laughs> Cause any food is better than some. But what if you could spend about $30 and make it so you had three full days worth of food, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks for your entire family that they would eat, that they would enjoy, that would meet all of their nutritional needs, and would be comforting in a time of crisis. That sounds a lot better, right? The other options that I've seen on the internet are the kind of long-term food supply, survivalist, kind of camping backpack things. And when you look at those, it's about $100 usually for like a 72 hour kit, sometimes more. And when you look at the meals inside those kits, it's always like potato soup, oatmeal, kind of very bland things that you wouldn't necessarily choose to eat if it was in your choice to do so. And the other problem with those is that they usually don't come pre-portioned into single serving packs. So you get one of these big square 72 hour emergency food kits and you get like a big bag of potato soup. That's all anybody's eating because it says like nine servings of potato soup. You have to open it, you have to pretty much cook it all at once, there's no way to reseal anything. I think that's also a problem. So I put together this 72 hour emergency family food kit cold cost under $40, including the bucket. Let's talk about why a bucket is pretty much the perfect thing to keep a 72 hour emergency supply of food in. One, this is highly portable. You can grab it and go if the emergency that happens is maybe a fire or an evacuation, earthquakes, you have to leave your home for some reason, you could grab this and have 72 hours worth of food for your family 
ready to go. It has a handle, perfectly portable. Two, this is fairly protected. If you store your emergency food supply in your pantry, there's a chance you're gonna eat it. If you store it in a backpack, there's a chance something else could eat it. Nothing is really chewing through this. Additionally, having something that is sealable, that is hard plastic, is going to be fairly durable. It will keep air out, it will help keep the food that you put inside it fairly fresh. And we'll talk more about how to choose the correct items to put in here in just a little bit. This is a food safe bucket. <laughs> I got it from Lowe's just recently, but I'll tell you right now, you don't necessarily need a food safe bucket with a gamma lid. I got this because it's easy to screw on and screw off. What would also work perfectly because all of the items that you're going to put in here are already sealed. You don't necessarily need a food safe seal, but you could put, if you were a really big prepper, you could put straight food in here, grain, flour, etc. We're not gonna do that. I'm just saying I like the white. You could also just get one of these suckers. This is a Lowe's five gallon bucket. I think it was $3 and then the lid was another two. This will also protect your food. They sell them at Home Depot, they sell them at Academy. You can get one of these for less than a meal at McDonald's is absolutely going to withstand whatever you need to put it through and it'll store your food safely. These are also stackable. They can fit in a closet really easily. You can just have it on hand for when the emergency happens. So that is why I chose a five gallon bucket for this. Also, in my experience, it was able to fit more than enough food for two to four persons for three days so easily. You can add a bunch of extra stuff in there if you want. Let's move on to what food I'm choosing to put in here for my personal 72 hour food kit and what other options might be good for you and your family. Here we have everything that I have in my emergency bucket, as well as an inventory list and a meal plan, which I will show on screen and down below. And also I'm going to show the costs of each item here. If we were not in a pandemic situation, you could probably wait and save up and find these on sale. You can definitely still do that, but I bought all of these at a normal to premium price on April 1st, 2020. So I just added these additionally when I went to the store for some groceries. And the main thing is, is that I made sure to check the expiration dates on every single one of these to make sure that they did not expire within the year. So all of these don't expire until at least March of next year. And my plan is essentially around my birthday, which is January 30th. I will break out the tub next year, pull all of these out, put them into my normal pantry so we can incorporate them into normal eating and meal plans before they expire refill the tub and we're golden. The total cost of everything here was just $30. That's not including the tub. Including the tub, depending on what type of five gallon bucket you're able to pick up, it's gonna cost between $35 and $40. Or if you already have something similar laying around, $30 three day emergency kit for two to four people. So I have created this and I've purchased these specific items based on what Jacob, my boyfriend, and I will eat, what we enjoy eating. And I think it's very important that you curate your emergency food supply to what your family will eat. If your kids will not under any circumstances eat rice, maybe don't put rice in there for your kids and then expect them to eat it in a time of super crisis. So this is breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack for each day. There was also plenty of room left in the bucket, so I could add additional needs if necessary, but I wanted to keep it as low cost and as simple as possible. I'll have everything I have in here in a list down below. For breakfast or a snack, and these are gonna be interchangeable, you have a choice of Pop-Tarts or granola bars, of which there are six servings each in there. So I'm counting, this has 12 pastries. Each person could actually have two per day the situation. And then also I have three cans of fruit here that we could have for breakfast and a box of milk. Okay, everything you see, see here came from either Walmart or HEB with uh, exception to the milk, which actually came from the Dollar Tree and the can opener, which came from Dollar Tree. Yes, it's not necessarily the healthiest thing on the planet to eat, but this is A, a hell of a lot better than ration bars or the <laughs> very generic soupy messes that come in the long-term food storage things. B, we'll eat all of this easily and it will actually provide us with 
protein, carbs, energy, vegetables, fruits, everything that we actually kind of need. And this is also gonna be comfort food for us in the case of, in case of an emergency. For us, for breakfast or a snack, we have some options and I've just put these together because they're very similar. For a snack, you could also have these chicken salad packets, which don't expire until April of next year. Now there are no crackers in here because it's kind of hard to find those that don't expire, but you can make do. You probably have those laying around in case of an emergency anyway. So for lunch, you have the choice of a noodle or rice pack, which are very easily made with just a little bit of water, garlic parmesan rice, chicken, fried rice, teriyaki noodles, cheesy cheddar noodles, and parmesan spinach fettuccine noodles. All of these can just be made with just some water in a pot, including the supplies in my regular emergency kit, or if it's an emergency like we're in now and we're stuck at home, these just go on the stove. I also have some options here if you just need to heat something or you could potentially even eat these cold. I've got a can of Southwest style chicken tortilla soup, a can of tomato soup, and a can of chili with beans. All of those you just have to eat heat. You don't necessarily have to cook. And with the tomato soup, you can either use the milk, which is a favorite way to cook it of mine, or water. And that is a total of nine servings, assuming everyone just kind of gets the entire thing for themselves. So that has an alternate option for dinner in there too. So for dinner, I have these big soup mixes. So this is a Bear Creek eight serving size soup. It cooks fairly quickly. You don't want to buy one of the like bean soup kinds. It takes you know, eight to 10 hours to cook because you're not necessarily going to have that much time or heat in an emergency. But both the creamy potato and the chicken noodle in here are really good. I've had them before, I've zhuzhed them up a little, and I have two cans of canned chicken here, which I could use to add protein to. We also have some vegetables, which could be either served alongside or in the actual soups. So that'll zhuzh that up a little bit, make it nice. And of course, with the potato soup, you could add milk to it, make it a little creamier. Essentially, it's not that different from if we were just cooking regularly at home. All of these would be delicious things to eat that wouldn't feel that far off from normal things that we make and eat. Obviously, you could also use the vegetables or the chicken with some of the sides that are a little bit smaller for lunch and essentially switch these around as much as you'd like. But it's a good series of options. You wouldn't get sick of it in an emergency. It's not just eating an energy bar or a ration bar every single day. It'll give you a little bit of variety. Oh, and I should mention that most of the cans in here have pop tops, but some of them do not simply because they were cheaper to buy without. So I just added a Dollar Tree can opener in here. It's not the type of thing you'd remember to grab as you were running out the door, but so just keep one in the bucket. <laughs> now let's talk about some of the things that you could put in here that might be better suited to your needs, taste preferences, or family. All of these I skipped in mine, but I would eat them. In fact, I took them out of my cupboards. I'm not gonna put them in because the expiration dates are sooner, but let's just talk about them. So first, you could easily add some instant coffee or some tea if those are your preferences, if those are things that soothe you in the case of an emergency, absolutely stock some and put it in there. It'll provide some comfort. These cute little chicken salad kits that they sell at Aldi, Walmart, H-E-B, etc., have crackers in them. They usually have very long shelf lives. Extremely easy to just pop open, eat if you need a snack or something on the go if you're feeling low blood sugar or tired, work really well. In a similar vein, things like salami meats, summer sausages and trail mix would all be excellent options to go into emergency meal kit, either for snacks or easy on the go meals. All of these have long shelf lives. This was uh, weirdly out of my kit, but my boyfriend and I actually eat ramen fairly regularly. I know that sounds bad, but we zhuzh it up with like real vegetables and meat and eggs. And it's actually a favorite of ours. So this could easily go in to the emergency kit as a comfort meal. And obviously they're cheap as heck, take up no room whatsoever and are very easy and fast to cook. Oatmeal is a favorite of the pre-prepared emergency kits. That is pretty much the only option they give you for breakfast and it's specifically why I didn't put it in mine. But little packets like this would be very easy to make with just some water, no refrigeration needed. A jar of peanut butter that doesn't expire for a while would be an excellent savory treat. Easy, easy, easy. Same with crackers. Just make sure that the expiration date is far enough out so you're not eating five-year-old crackers. And you could also stock your kit with other bars that you like. Doesn't have to be 
the ones that I have, or something nice like some chocolate or hot chocolate, once again, to soothe your family in the time of a crisis instead of just having the food to survive. Oh yeah, and pudding. Shelf stable as heck, delicious. These would be going in my kit if they didn't expire in November, because I'm gonna eat them. Okay, so that is my 72 hour emergency food kit for a family of two to four. I would love to know what you think of this, what you would put in your emergency bucket if you're planning on making one. It is cheap, it is an easy way to feel in control and prepared and to make it easier on your family if you're going through a crisis so you know you have something that your family will eat and will enjoy eating. So tell me something that you will absolutely need to put in your kit down below and tell me if you are planning to take on this project. I would love to have a lot of friends out there with at least three days worth of shelf stable food in their closet somewhere ready to go in case of an emergency. Also let me know below what else you want me to do in this preparedness series. I have a previous video that I did on my car emergency kit that I would love to update and if you are interested in that, the previous video will be down below. And if you want me to update it, tell me that in the comments below. And also if you would like me to go over a bug out kit for various emergencies and also a cleaning hygiene and toiletry emergency bucket. I can make that happen as well because believe it or not, I happen to have one of those. It also allows me to more easily cook all the stuff in my emergency food bucket. Makes life a little easier. All right, I would love to talk to you more about being prepared and emergency preparedness below. Let's chat in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. I sincerely hope that it helped you and stay safe out there.